How to solve circuits the right way, once and for all. Lecture 4 comprises a series of videos on examples of the application of the extra element theorem. This is Vajra Vorperian with the choice of circuits analysis. The examples covered in Lecture 4 and more can be found in my book, Fast Analytical Techniques in Electrical and Electronic Circuits, published by Cambridge University Press. In this video, I'm going to work out the example of the voltage gain of an inverting non-ideal operational amplifier and its output resistance. Here's then the equivalent circuit diagram of the non-ideal op-amp circuit, with the non-ideal components Rn, R0, and A0. And we will want to determine the voltage gain V out over V in in the presence of these non-idealities. We are going to designate the dependent source A0 V epsilon as the extra element and allow its value to go to infinity at first. When we do that, we obtain the circuit here in which A0 goes to infinity and as a result, because of the feedback connection here, V epsilon, the voltage that it depends on, shrinks down to zero. This reduces the entire circuit to an ideal op-amp circuit calculation. As you can see, V epsilon goes to zero, and therefore the op-amp cannot draw any current from the outside circuit, regardless of the value of Rn, whether that's infinite or finite. And the voltage V in, which appears across R1, because V epsilon is zero, starts a current through R1, which when it gets to this junction here, turns around and flows entirely through R2, creating a voltage drop across R2, plus minus this way, which is equal to V in divided by R1 times R2. But that voltage across R2 is the same at, as the output voltage V0. And we have the familiar result that the voltage gain of this circuit here, and when A0 is infinite, is minus R2 over R1. This is the familiar result that we have for an ideal op-amp. We now have two additional calculations to perform in order to apply the extra element theorem. The first one is the inverse gain with respect to A0 with the excitation of H set equal to zero, that is to say the input voltage equal to zero. And the second one is the inverse gain with respect to A0 with the response of H set equal to zero. Now we're going to perform the first one, that is to say, the inverse gain with respect to A0 with the excitation of H set equal to zero. And here it is, we excitation is V in, so we set that equal to zero by short circuit here. And we replace the dependent source with an independent voltage source here, pointing in the opposite direction. And then we're going to compute how much Vt, this test source, that replaces the dependent source here, talks back to the voltage V epsilon. And once you do that, you see that this is a straightforward voltage division between Vt and V epsilon. We can do this in a number of ways. The simplest is to take a Thevenin equivalent of Vt, R0, and Rl. You can do that uh, by inspection, you have an equivalent Thevenin source here that is given by the voltage division between RL and RL plus R0 and an internal resistance of R0 parallel RL. And then you can see that you have a voltage division between the Thevenin voltage R0 parallel RL, R2, and R1 parallel Rn. And right away you can find the inverse gain that we're talking about here. So A bar is the first 7 in voltage factor here, and this one is just the voltage division between the three resistors that we have. Next, as we said, we're going to determine the null inverse gain with respect to A0 with the response of H null, that is to say the output voltage V naught nulled. And to accomplish this, we again replace the dependent voltage source here with an independent voltage source Vt pointing in the opposite direction. But this time Vt and Vin, the excitation of the transfer function, original excitation, 
the two together are going to null the output voltage V0. And under those conditions, we're going to see how much Vt talks to V epsilon. When we do that, this is easy to follow on the circuit diagram. So when V0 goes to zero, the current through it goes to zero. And the voltage Vt appears acro entirely across R0 and starts a current through it Vt over R0. And that current, when it reaches this junction here, bounces around and flows through R2, generating a voltage drop across R2. The reason Vt, of course, appears entirely across R0 is because you have nulled the output V0. And that's why Vt appears across R0 and generates a current flowing in this direction, minus Vt over R0, and that flows through R2, generating a voltage drop across R2. But you see that the voltage across R2 when the output is nulled is nothing more than V epsilon, the one that you're after. And you're done. Here it is. V epsilon over Vt now is equal to simply minus R2 over R0. Simple as that. Doing the algebra on the circuit diagram. So we have computed the two additional computations that we need to apply for the extra element theorem. And now we substitute these three individual and independent calculations that we performed, H infinity, A bar, and script A bar, in the extra element theorem and obtain the expression for the inverting gain of a non-ideal operational amplifier. We see that this expression is in meaningful form because the dominant term that appears up front is the familiar gain of the ideal inverting operational amplifier. It is followed by a correction factor. And the reason this is a correction factor, it's because its numerator is of the form 1 minus a small quantity divided by 1 plus a small quantity. The reason these quantities, of course, are small with respect to 1 is quite clear. You notice this factor A0, which is typically a very large number, dividing these expressions here. So therefore, this is a correction factor. And this is a very meaningful answer obtained in three simple steps. Most of the algebra, almost the entire algebra, that is to say, being done on the circuit diagram. Three independent, separate calculations, fairly simple ones, as you saw. Next, we're going to work out the output resistance of this amplifier. In the second example, we are going to determine the output resistance of the non-ideal operational amplifier. To do so, we connect a test current source at its output and study the voltage V appearing across this test current source, while independent excitation inside the op amp is set equal to zero, that is V in here is set equal to zero. So the transfer function that we are after is R out, the response is V here, and the excitation is I, as shown in this circuit here. We are going to apply the extra element theorem and designate A0, the dependent source here, as the extra element. But in this case, we are going to set its value first, A0 equal to zero. Because if we let A0 go to infinity, the output impedance is going to be zero, and we cannot write our answer as zero multiplied by a correction factor. So we're going to write, we're going to take A0 equal to zero first and determine its output resistance. And when we do that, we see that when we do the short circuit uh, here, where the dependent source is, a0 equal to 0, then the output resistance is pretty straightforward. It is R0 in parallel with R2 plus R1 parallel Rn. So that's our first computation for the extra element theorem, in which the extra element takes on a value of 0. We have to perform now two additional calculations. 
first calculation that we have to perform is the inverse gain with respect to A0 with the excitation of R out set equal to 0. And since the excitation of R out is the current source connected at that output, we set its value equal to 0 and we obtain the circuit here. And now we want to determine the inverse gain V epsilon over VT with the excitation set equal to 0. And the circuit obviously is a very simple circuit now. Three resistances in series and a voltage divider will yield V epsilon over VT, which is R1 parallel with Rn divided by R1 parallel with Rn plus R2 plus R0. And you get your A bar. That's the inverse gain with respect to A0 with the excitation of R out set equal to 0. The second one that we need to perform, again, you determine the inverse gain with respect to the A0, but this time with the response nulled. And we talked a lot about this in our previous videos, nulling the response. The voltage across a current source is tantamount to shorting that current source here. So in this case, when we try to determine the inverse gain V epsilon over VT with the response of R out set equal to zero, effectively you short that port here. And when you do that, you realize that VT cannot generate a voltage V epsilon with the short circuit present here. So the null inverse gain V epsilon over VT is zero. So these are the two additional calculations that we need for the application of the EET to R out. And now we're going to substitute these three independent calculations in the extra element theorem applied to the output resistance. When we do that, H equals to H0, the value of the transfer function with alpha taken equal to zero, followed by this correction factor here. That means R out equals to R0 into 1 plus A0 over script A bar divided by 1 plus A0 times A bar. And when we perform that substitution, we obtain this expression here. And that is your output resistance of the non-ideal op-amp circuit in the presence of these non-idealities. We are going to revisit this expression here in future uh, lectures when I discuss feedback, but I can give you a slight preview here. What you're looking here is the loop gain of the operational amplifier circuit there in that feedback configuration. And what you have here is the output resistance of the op-amp R0, including the loading of the feedback network without the action of feedback. The loading of the feedback network means that there is a connection between output and input R2 and without the action of the feedback means that there is no loop gain and the only way you can kill the loop gain really is not by killing or opening the feedback loop but by setting the gain inside that loop equal to zero and the gain inside that loop is only due to A0. So when you set A0 equal to zero what you're doing is you're looking at the circuit with the loading of the feedback but without the action of the feedback and that is what this term here is it is the output resistance of the op amp in parallel with the loading effect of the feedback connection go back to that circuit and look at it and that divided by one plus the loop gain gives you the output resistance in the presence of the action of the feedback. We're going to be talking about this later on in future lectures when I discuss feedback amplifiers. Thank you.